thing started let's get this let's thing get started <laughs> man i love watching the nuggets don't you guys don't you guys love it I mean, you guys or what, what how you feel about watching the nuggets? <laughs> <laughs> what is up everybody welcome to the pregame show <laughs> presented by bet365 never ordinary never never ordinary not once <laughs> Definitely not tonight. Going to be far from ordinary. As the Denver Nuggets play host to the Chicago Bulls. Shout out to CHGO. Uh, we went to their place. They came to our place. Still preseason. Yeah, I, I can't believe we didn't have them. We didn't pipe them in after the... So they could gloat over us. Uh, that, that, was the best. Second, that two overtime. We'll get thriller. you next time, um, guys. Today's show, we're going to talk about. I think the team has found a new Christian Brown. Ugh. I think Whoa. the team has a new Christian Brown. We're going to talk still about on it. The team, though, yeah, well, well, like not, they it's have not the current, old it's not Christian, Brown. Christian oh, okay. Brown. They have the old Christian Brown, but I think they have the new one. Uh, also, could this be Jokic's wilt season? Wilt Chamberlain, what does that mean? We'll go over that. Yeah, and what course, does that mean? What, I mean, I, you guys are, <laughs> I haven't told you anything about this pregame show. We're gonna in what fast in what way of Wilt's life? We're gonna find out. <laughs> You're right. I should have clarified this a little bit more. Uh, and then, of course, we're gonna bet on this game with all of these really unique prop bets from Bet Three Six Five. First, let me introduce my panel over here with a brand new jacket. Brennan vote. New jacket. Very flannel, very Colorado. What do you think, Dev? You're the only person whose opinion matters to me. I mean, there's a paper towel. It's brawny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do him. look yeah. very brawny. Yeah, ask me. Ask me. Eric, what do you think? I really like it. You look great. Oh, thanks, man. Wow, thanks. that was a real turn. <laughs> yeah, that was I a actually twist. started with wow. D-Line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who would have known that? Speaking of great jackets, my man from Serbia. That's right, dude. Oh, yeah. I bought this in the airport, and then later on when I did the math, I realized I got gouged. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Worth it, though. That it's thing totally looks incredible. I, I love it. Uh, representing Serbia. And then over there, of course, always stylish. Devilishly handsome. I just Superstar can't believe dad. that you're still getting ripped off like this, man. You would think that you're like a, a man of the people, Listen, and they wouldn't do you like this. I spent all week uh, with the... Looking at prices in dinars, and it was like a number that didn't make sense. You're like, it's nothing. And then later on, I was like, thirteen thousand. Thirteen thousand is not that bad. Yeah. Um, but here in America, Nuggets taking on the Chicago Bulls preseason game number three. We're at the halfway point, guys, of the preseason. A halfway point. There's another half of this to go. Actually, the Nuggets play a basketball game in nine days for real. They raise a banner. But tonight, it is the Chicago Bulls vote. Do you have any game notes for us? Yeah, we'll call it the return to ball arena for the Nuggets here. A little preseason home action. And David Adelman had a little update for us. Well, let's start with housekeeping. The injury report, Christian Brown out again with the calf. Michael Porter Jr. out again with the ankle. Mm. And then Jay Huff on the injury report with a right rib fracture. He is out. Uh, D-line, does it change your opinion of uh, Jay Huff knowing that that Perhaps that first poster dunk, he broke a rib and gutted it out through not one but two overtimes with a broken rib. It was definitely on the second one, the one where he was crumpled <laughs> under the basket. Come on. Well, that's what happened. Um, does it change my opinion? I don't want to be the anti Jay Huff guy. Well, I did not choose this life. This life chose me. I didn't intend to be this person. I don't. Uh, I. Am rooting for Jay Huff. Well, that's, you know what? I actually appreciate this. I, yeah. also, no, 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 I actually appreciate it because I hate when you have to root against a guy to be right on yeah, a day. It's I, like I, the worst thing there I is. I didn't want this to. I just noticed somebody in Summer League that I thought looked very out of place, and then the <laughs> Nuggets signed him, and I know other people saw it. And again, I can see why he could be a good player. I'm rooting for Jay Huff. That sucks he got hurt. I like this. I like. I appreciate. <laughs> but it. I, did, it I seen the moment that he decided to go against Huff. It was out of the way. He was like eating at summer league. He looked up. A yeah. guy was on the floor. He's like, he's always on the floor. That yeah. guy is so. Uh, so I seen it all yeah, happen, and then he just stuck. He stuck to that. I like take. that. And he, I'm glad that he's now starting to yeah. get over that hump. I like that he pointed out you were eating. 
<laughs> well, <laughs> I remember that part. <laughs> That's what we do. Well, you guys have credentials. We drink and eat. <laughs> I remember thing. that. Part. I, I had my second drink. What else is in the game? <laughs> well, let's get an update. How about on Michael Porter Jr. in that ankle, Christian Brown in that calf contusion, both progressing, says David Adelman. The hope is they play in Thursday in Los Angeles, not Tuesday, but Thursday for the fifth and final preseason game. That's the best case scenario, Adelman told the media. And of course, we're getting all of this from Harrison Wind, who is. In Ball Arena tonight. A little bit of a bummer, not going to lie. Harrison, uh, not but the, wind, not not the wind part. We're glad you're there. Um, wind also has this to say. The starters expect the same. Jamal Murray, Contavious Caldwell, Pope, Justin Holiday, Aaron Gordon, Nikola Jokic. And then Michael Malone, obviously, who is not with the team, is expected to rejoin them in Los Angeles this week. Again, Tuesday and Thursday games. At some point, Michael Malone will rejoin the team. One more note from Adam in here. One of the main reasons we've seen the starters play as much as they have and that they are going to play tonight is that the conditioning is still at a B at this point, David Adelman said. Uh, so they're going to get a game off eventually, but right now they're still trying to get those boys into shape. We'll see the same starting lineup, though, fellas, and uh, that's what I got game note-wise. If Malone does miss this game and he misses the next one on Tuesday in Los Angeles and then he comes back and the starters have played all four, does he pl – like, do you think he wants to play the starters? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think naturally he would want to just get his guys back into to a flow and just see what they're missing. Um, I know that he's watching right now, um, or at least he's going to go back and watch. And I know that he has critique because he's just such a competitor and he wants yeah. just like perfection from his guys. But also, you don't want to run your guys into the ground um, no. at the same time. So I think he wants to be with them. I don't think that he would play them in the same fashion. One more note, actually, on starters. Let's go to Chicago. They're switching it up to time. Tonight. So it's Kobe White, Ayo DeSunmo, uh, Patrick Williams, Tory Craig, old friend, and self-proclaimed Hall of Famer, although he might be if he matches up with Zeke Naji every night, Andre Drummond. Oh, yeah, you're right. He did say that so, he so believes starters, he's in his Hall of Famer. He believes yeah. himself to be one. So those starters are all out? Did it say yeah. out or is that yeah, just the, that's basic, no, those are the guys who are starting. Those so are not going to go to Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan. I mean, so I don't think you're bringing them off the bench if that's what you're asking. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think, think they're, they're probably not playing. Out. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> try the well, they, all got they save him for the <laughs> second yeah. overtime. Yeah. Um, so that should be interesting. The same Nuggets starters here tonight. Justin Holiday, D line. Who's your eye on tonight? Uh, it's Strother. I'm locked into Strother. Like that's that is the guy that I uh, think has the most to prove and has shown out the absolute most. I mean. You know, I think that in years past, it would be like, well, what's the point? He's a rookie. But I think Christian Brown paved the way for uh, rookies to actually get, like, legitimate looks from Michael Malone. And mm. so I want to, see like, do it once. That's dope. Do it twice. Wow. Three times. Like, psh. You know, we're gonna you're, you're getting a menu item at the bar three Absolutely. times. Yeah. Three. Oh, Yo, dude. The you're straw. Right, though. I don't think he can do like if he has a bad game, that would suck. But I think through two games, he's done enough to like even earn him that. But if he has a third straight good game, I just. That's There's it. so much momentum for him in this preseason right now. Like everything about him is looking good. So I'm with you. I love it. Dev, what about you? What I'm looking for too is the Reggie Jackson um and and pick it. Like I, I really think that that's a real thing that we have to um take a look at. And also, do they buy into like their role right now? Um Reggie Jackson's the backup point guard, and that's who they're gonna give a crack at it until they don't. And then also Pickett is trying to, you know, work his way into the rotation and, um, you know, just make an impression. Um, so right now it's Reggie Jackson's to lose. Does he lose it or does he continue to, you know, play the way that he's playing? And also, you know, the home game, the one home preseason game, maybe this is the game the starters play into the second half. You know, they talk about conditioning. Maybe this is one they, they push a little bit further. I don't know. What about you? Who are you looking for? I'm going to go right back to the well. Zeke Naji. I think two games, two very different results, two very different matchups, to be fair. But yeah, I just think this is, to me, one of the biggest question marks on the roster. And it's you got to see him string some quality performances together. I would really like for him to emerge as the backup five. I think it's the optimal outcome. But he has to show us it's the optimal outcome. The potential has to be realized. The flashes have to become consistent. And every minute, every minute matters for Zeke this season, including the preseason minutes. They they matter a lot, I feel, yeah. just in terms of trust. I think right now, you look at Zeke and 
you know, he's the guy. He's going to play. But your trust level is kind of like opening night. Is he going to? How is he going to be? A yep. little shaky. Love to see him get a little bit of momentum. So I'm with you. Zeke Naji to me, is probably the guy that I'm in on. And then the guy we didn't mention, Peyton Watson. I'd just love for him to have a really good game tonight. Yep. Um, he has yet to have a good game in preseason. In my opinion. I shouldn't say a good game. He has I yet to he, have a very good game. Yeah. I think he's had good games. He but has, he hasn't had a game where you're kind of like, there it is. That's the guy. That's what they need. We My, saw a little. Of, I'm sorry. We saw a little of that in the first game. Yeah, and, sure. And a little sprinkles. A, bri- a big void of it in the second. Yeah. What does that look like to you, though, Adam? Like, what does a good game yeah, from Peyton question. Watson look so, like? Number one, I think fewer mistakes. Because this is the thing about Peyton is we know he has the upside, but it's like, hey, he's the furthest along and just like being raw. So it's that, and then defensive impact. It, I, like, I don't care about his offense, honestly. I know that sounds weird. I don't care about it because I know that's going to be a work in progress. Defensive impact. Are there possessions he saves? Are there possessions where he, he just completely stonewalls the other team and they get terrible shots? I want to see those add up. Um, but I do like your answer for Julian Strother because he has been unbelievable in this preseason. Far exceeded any of my expectations for him. Far. Yeah. And it made me think... You know, last year, Christian Brown comes in. Calvin Booth picks him, you know, late in the first round. And he comes in, and you think, what's the skill set? Is he a high upside player? Probably not. But is he a high floor player? Yes. And let's think about this. Defensively, doesn't make mistakes, has a great build, great body on him. And not just that's the floor, but the ceiling defensively for Christian was. But he could also be an impact guy. You can't get around him. He shuts down good players. Yep. And then you go to the other side of the floor, offense for Christian Brown. He's not great offensively, but he's not an anchor. It's not like he can't do anything. He's not a guy, you know, Michael Kidd Gr- Gilchrist or something who shoots like this or something. He's just like solid, okay player. To me, Julian Strother is his offensive counterpart. Mm-hmm. If you just flipped everything and said, okay, how is Julian Strother on defense? He seems at this moment solid. Like he's not making mistakes. He's not going to shut anybody down. He's not getting the best assignments, but he's solid. He looks so far like he could use his length, but offensively doesn't make mistakes can execute at a bunch of different things, like shooting at a high level, cutting at a high level, all those things. To me, Christian and Julian are the yin and yang player where they're like the same guy. One's an offensive version, one's a defensive version. <laughs> That's interesting. I, I, Coming into this season up until now, I was in my mind, I was like, the combo player is going to be Christian Brown and Piwat to fill in where um, Bruce Brown left off. But, I mean, I can see that, yeah, I mean, like, Strother through two games has been a an offensive virtuoso. He's been the greatest shooter these eyes have ever been. <laughs> uh, he's been incredible, truly. But how many but mistakes right. has he made? I mean, I have not literally noticed a single one. I mean, I, I've not gone back down and uh, gone back yeah. and, like, watched, but, like, nothing negative has, has arisen for Julian Strother to my eyes, so... Yeah, that's interesting. And, and with Christian Brown, it's like, when was he out of position defensively? Missed assignment. With Julian, you'd say, how many bad shots has he taken, Dev? Not many. But also with him. When they go in, just, they're good. You just don't know what is a bad shot because yeah. he's able to shoot it from wherever. <laughs> and he's also <laughs> such a creative player. And I think that I was originally on the same idea as D-Line of it's going to be Peyton Watson and, uh, you know, Brown. But now that you bring it up with Strother, it's it's like the expectation thing. Like you go in thinking that it's going to be one thing, and and that's what you you know drafted him for. You just thought it was going to be only shooting, and with Brown, you thought it was going to be only defense. And then he shows other parts of his of his game that you're like, okay, like he has the pieces, he has the tools, and it's going to like manifest himself into something else. Um, so with Strother, while I thought it was only going to be shooting, he's showing other parts of right. his game, and I'm like, okay, this opens up, um, you know, the idea of. He could be this, he could be this, and he adds everything. Malone brought our attention almost right away to, yes, he can shoot, but he's very good at getting himself open, and that yep. has really stood out to me. He re- he relocates well. Uh, he mm-hmm. moves as the ball moves. He's not... You can ball watch and then be flat-footed, but he's not, right? He's watching the ball with an understanding of where he needs to be next, anticipating where it goes next. So that's the Christian Brown, right, kind of flip side reflection of he's just in the right spots. And, you know, he hasn't done a ton of playmaking or putting the ball on the floor, but he's looked fairly comfortable when he has. He just looks like a guy that's ready to play basketball. So I like the Brown comp. If you combine, like, Strother's offense and Christian's defense, that's like an all-star. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> Michael Jordan. <laughs> it's like, But it's for real. It's like a uh, top five pick yeah. who's just solid at everything. Like, 
so that's why I say they're sort of counterparts. And I just the defensive part to me becomes because I knew he was going to be a good shooter. I didn't know how much he read the court. He reads the court way better than I thought. Yeah, way better. Clearly, he seems to know himself, which is something Aaron Gordon said of all of these rookies. They know who they are. They know their their games, and they he stays in the line. But defensively, he looks huge, and he just doesn't. You have to not be a guy that a team can just say, go at him every time. You can't be D'Angelo Russell in the playoffs. You can't be those types of guys. And to me, I'm watching him, and I go, he doesn't scare me as a guy that teams – he knows how to play his position, and he's long. Is he going to get burned by really good players? I think so early on in his career. He's going to look ugly out on an island against De'Aaron Fox and that caliber of player. But I think he is solid, and I just – I'm so high on him. I'm so excited, and to me – he does feel like I understand why Calvin picked him. Remember when we went to the draft and we were like, "How weird!" We thought Cal just like defensive guys. They I did. I was gonna say this. Like that's the one thing that like has been resonating or just rattling around in my head is that like I love we and we said this. I love that Calvin Booth just doesn't have a, a type, a guy like the type that he doesn't in the, like meaning that offensive shooter. We the, his first yeah. draft it was like he just likes hard nosed defensive right. players and it was like. Okay, is that are we are going to get a uh, you know are we going to reconstruct the bad boy Pistons here? Right. Like, um, but he's clearly got an eye for all variety of talent, all variety of skill sets that are you know required if you're going to be a special team. Like it seems like the one thing that he does like is length and, and right. uh, which is important. I think he does have a type though, Dev. If you were to go through and list every skill, let's say he like broke basketball down into twenty skills. And then you ranked him one to ten. He drafts guys, or at least in this range, that don't have anything below a five, because that's what Christian Brown is. Like he's a ten on ball. He's a nine at getting through screens. He's like all this. And then you get to like three point shooting. He's a five. He's all right. You know, dribbling. He's a yeah. five. He's okay. And this is it with Christian. I just feel like his good skills are good, and his negatives have a baseline that's like passable. Some prospects are all over the board. You know, like he can't dribble for anything or this or that. That's what I think Calvin's looks for in the draft with mines i think that it's uh one i think it's uh potential then it goes high, like iq and then yeah. just length like those are the three things that i think for him so like the potential and then also like you talk about like how what are your lows like i think that that where the iq comes in because he has like peyton watson for instance who did not have a, a great college career or anything but the potential was so high and it's like okay what am i missing with this what is the lowest thing that he could be? He's going to be, a you know, the potential, he's one of the best defenders there is. If not, this is what we're seeing right now. If this is the lowest you're going to get on Peyton Watson, you're not taking many chances. Mm-hmm. Like, he's a really good player still. And then also he has the length. And Denver has gotten a lot, you know, yeah, smarter, longer. a lot longer, a lot bigger um, than they have in the past. And it's just like championship pedigree. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they have all of the, the the small pieces that you need. He has a type, in my opinion. I want to move on to this next one, and I want to throw it to you. But uh, friend of the show, Jordan Scott, over the weekend, we were talking about Yoke took 11 shots in game number one. He took 10 shots in game number two. Jordan Scott had the perfect reply. He said, this is Jokic's version of the Wilt assist season. Remember, (laughs) Wilt every year averaged 30, 40 a game. And then one year he's like, just let's see if I could lead the league in assists, not scoring. What if Yoke this year was like, I wonder if I could score 30. I wonder if I could score 35. No, I don't think he's actually doing this. I don't. Th- I think Yoke respects the game too much to like make these weird ones. But I do wonder if there is a part of Yoke that goes, I scored 30 a, a game in the playoffs against the best defenses. Maybe this year I should try ratcheting it up the aggressiveness a little bit this year. And I think for Jokic it would be because of what follows from that yep. and how much harder it makes a team to game plan for Denver particularly and Maybe also as he watched Jamal play in the finals and Jamal who Man, just hit this. this new level of finding guys. But I would also even say Jokic in particular. Yeah. Jamal, Jamal's Jamal's find Yoke bag is enormous. Yep. And they have figured out a particular chemistry that last year they developed that almost there's the back shoulder pass in football. They had the back ankle pass where Jamal dumps it and Yoke scoops it into a layup. So I just maybe maybe it's not a departure from Yoke's character in that his honest assessment of the best thing to do for this team is to force the issue right away and to put pressure on defenses, or at least more so than he has in the past. The real best people like, are the best players in the world kind of got bored with the game, so they <laughs> come up yep. with their own challenges. You just talk about Will Chamberlain saying, I want to just lead the league in assists. Um, Larry Bird's like, I'm going to play all left hand. 
Michael Jordan shot free throws with his eyes closed. It's like, <laughs> what, is, what is one extra piece that I could add to make the game a little bit more fun for me? And you, you talk about a, a polarizing player and just a different type of player. Jokic is, Jokic is just, he's way different. Like, he's not traditional in the same way of superstardom. So maybe he does play these type of challenges where I'm going to push in different ways because it's going to make it easier for me. It's going to make it easier for everyone else. But also it's a challenge um, for myself. So like that will take is is awesome because I really could see him saying, how do I make myself different or what is my challenge coming into the year? I've mastered everything else. How about I lead the league in points for one year? <laughs> but Can you I, imagine? But also, I mean, there's this thing where what did everyone save the if you had to try to guard Denver? And I think that Make those, him a score. And they, they even felt silly saying yeah. it, where you want to try to force him to be a scorer. But what if what if Yoke's approach is taking that and okay, yeah, it's 20 points in the first quarter, and I was 10 of 11 from the field or whatever. And maybe maybe the goal is by the start of the second quarter, you're already panicking and going away from your game plan. Because turning Yoke into a, a willing scorer. Uh, is not actually as good of a strategy as it sounds. Yeah, to me, it's like I think something just was unlocked in Jokic. I think like he just wants, he, like he tasted what it is to be the undisputed best player in the world. It, well, undisputed by everyone except for the sports leader <laughs> ESPN. But like the idea that like it, it was, he I can't could do. We have to say this. It's only the experts, though. It's only the experts. I actually love experts. that we get to. But yeah. I just, I think it's like. He, I do think he hears the criticism of him. I do think he hears yeah. these things. I, I think that, you know, people questioned, he, we've questioned, like, whether or not does he love the game, all right. this stuff. I kind of think he just is, just like, going to go out and just, like, kick everybody's ass. Like, I think he's, like, done with people saying this, that, or the other, and he's just going to dominate, like, through, and he's not, like, coming in, like, uh, I got to blah, 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 I got to get ready, I don't want, I wish it missed my heart. I think he's just, like, I'm going to step on your goddamn neck. Which he, I love. It's an evolution for him to where he's gone from the reluctant The reluctant goat, leader, yes. The reluctant goat. I mean, like, yes. leader, sure, that part's still coming too. But I just mean the, like, yes. he seemed uncomfortable. Even last year throwing the MVP, there's this level of, like, I'm not necessarily comfortable being the yes. guy that everyone agrees is the best. And it does feel, again, it's just preseason, it's just camp, it's just these different things. But it does feel like he's ready now. Yep. He's like, you know what? I want it. I needed to wait for that. Now I need to make sure everyone... I need to make sure Anthony Davis knows he's not yes. on my level. I need to make sure Joel Embiid knows he's not on my level. There the was always... The, experts at ESPN understand. Well, there was always the... <laughs> kind of, and this is all, you know, almost all said in like tongue-in-cheek and jokingly, but you know, is Yoke going to get one and then just disappear and retire? Might be going hard the other way. Man. It might be going he got a taste of this and this is where he would like to live now. And if that's the case, this is the golden era for real. You guys are on fire, man, bringing some phenomenal takes. You know one thing, though, that I haven't heard us discuss yet that I was thinking about when I was sitting at home watching the game the other day? Your haircut? Jake my, I didn't get you a haircut. Look, I need, oh, no, I need oh, a haircut. Oh, oh. No, here's the thing. I'm just guessing. I'm just guessing. You never know. know. I didn't know. Yeah, so it's just my hair doesn't <laughs> <laughs> um, It's that one. I think Yoke did add something to his game that we haven't discussed. I think he's stronger than ever. I agree, man. I think he actually might have hit the lab this summer, the weight room, in a way that he hasn't always. No, I know, I know you're saying because he doesn't look it, right? He looks a little flabby, this or that. It's how he played. In these last two games, part of why he's shooting so much is it looks like he's going up against Jay Huff. Like it looks like he's just pushing guys out of the way and getting layups. Except it's the same guys. It's Vucevic, you know, like yeah, it's yeah. It, it's Nurkic. It's the same guys, but he's just so much stronger than I've seen him. Even you know, mm. he's been a mixture of finesse and strength. It's not like he hasn't been strong. I just watch him and I go, I think he might be stronger than he Dude. was last year. That's a scary idea, only because of the the fact of he usually comes into the league after the summer and he's like working himself back into shape. Yeah. What if he was like this year? I'm gonna be not only just in shape, but I'm gonna be stronger. I'm gonna be you know able to just sustain right. that type of you know beating every single night where I'm gonna uh, abuse everyone. And we see that later on in the year. We see that when you need a basket, you know he's gonna go get one. But if he starts out the year with that and then works himself into shape. That's just really like elevating himself plus, to a different level. Plus, he's just getting like grown man strength. He's just like, <laughs> I love he's just, like he you has, walk around he has old man strength, now? grown man strength. You just walk around Serbia, you're like, oh my god, like I, every guy, a lot of grown man strength. Like, out grown there. Man, like his older brother is just like, yeah. like a, you know what? Just, you're right. It is the same genetics, like strength. I'm just, yeah. I'm just saying, like. <laughs> Guys get stronger the older yeah. they get, and like he's just he has most assuredly been working on his body, but like it's just like 
the in the connective tissue is getting more and more cauterized. More he, he actually looks noticeably different to me this year, and it's both things. I think Jokic came in a little overweight. I yeah. think he celebrated this summer for sure. But I think particularly his shoulders look bigger and stronger than I've ever seen them. He actually right now has a unique physique where it's like Ugh. he both looks out of shape and like he's been lifting weights all day long every day. And I, I'm actually buying this. I think he looks big and stronger than ever. For, for me, it's less than even just the look of it and more of how he was playing in these first two games where I'm like, he's kind of just pushing these guys. But tonight, a real task because... Andre Drummond's a big boy, man. He's one of the biggest, got hardest to move players in the NBA. So getting the start against Ask Yoke Zeke. tonight. <laughs> let's yeah, <laughs> but let's see if Yoke moves him around. All right, let's open up the Bet365 app. Never ordinary at Bet365. And let's ask Dev, what are these lines and what are these props? So what I'll tell you is I'm very new to the 365 <laughs> app. Sure. 365, uh, 365, yeah. 365. 365. And I just, I know there's going to be money to be made on this app this oh, entire God, year. Just because it's... It, they take things seriously. We're, we're new app hunting. Yeah. So I think that uh, other sports betting, they just use the same engine. I you think know they it have is? their own engine. You know what it is? Ordinary. Yeah. No, it's so ordinary. <laughs> they are treating these games as if they're very serious yep. games. Like they're putting like Jokic points at like 26 already, yeah, that's 27. Cool. That's wild. That is you know, wild. Like how much are they truly going to play? So there's going to be money to be made in this. <laughs> okay. This game, just a little bit different. So they still have it at six. Six is the line. And the best part about it being six, the line, none of the starters are playing. I don't think that they have, like, they got to realize that the starters are not playing. So wait, are the Nuggets favored by six or they're? No, the fa the Nuggets are favored by six. Okay. okay. Um, so you could get a first quarter bet. That's going to be super easy. It's going to be the starters first versus bench, yeah. Andre Drummond. Yeah. Like, that's just... that. You might as well get your money on. Ooh, on time the to nuggets. game the system, baby. You might as well game the system <laughs> early on. First half, the spread uh, Nuggets minus four. We're gonna take that. We really uh, have this. Yeah, <laughs> I can't believe you're handing out minus like this four. on preseason. I thought we were gonna the, do the fake. Bet the quarter is the quarter is minus two and a half. Oh, the first so quarter for minus this. two and a half. I can't believe I yeah, get because it's Nuggets starters versus non bull starters. That seems oh, like that easy. seems What's like a lot. On? Minus Thank four you, for the half. Six, five. The Nuggets are going to just, like, now it's going to be the backups um, in the second half. And also it's going to be the Bulls backups because oh, their backups are already starters. So this is going to be, a, like, a pretty even game, <laughs> only that you get a head start. Dude, I love head starts. I, I win every race when I have a head start <laughs> against children. I love <laughs> heartfelt and earnest Preseason analysis. Let's go. And making money off of it. <laughs> they still have it, like bet boost. They have Zach Levine to score 20 points. He can't. Don't take that. Can you go to the <laughs> under? He can't. <laughs> they got him to score three plus three points. They have no idea what they're doing. Is that still up? I'm going to make some money. Under, yeah. <laughs> gonna make some I money. love take, this. You taking your eye off the prize? You're coming to snatch it. Yeah, so. Look, there's money to be made. You might as well make it. Let's just do all Denver bets. <laughs> but that we, first quarter, that we first half is a big one. That's a big one. Holy smokes. All right. I love it. I didn't realize I still had a little bit of my bonus bets still here. I'm using I have my last bonus bet to make a Nuggets preseason bet. There's, oh, a, late, bet. there's a late game note from Harrison Wind. Nikola Jokic's top horse in Serbia, Breno Lamar, won a big race in, Sub in Subotica. Oh, you want to talk about motivation. The oh race you want to talk about motivation. Subotica, at 3,200 meters, Breno Lamar has won four races in a row and eight of the 11 he's entered this summer and oh fall. Oh, my goodness. Domination. That is domination, man. Domin Harrison wind is, just wind is out of everything. control. <laughs> he's on horses now, man. Like, he's, he's on the ponies, man. Goodness. He's on the ponies. <laughs> uh, every day you get to watch Nikola Jokic play basketball is a great day. Guess what? Today's a great day. Oh, We're going to go treat. around and watch him. Peyton Watson, Zeke Naji. further evaluation for all of those guys. And it's right here in front of the best fans in the world, Denver Nuggets fans. Hit that like button for us before you head out. Maybe drop a comment if you want to let us know who you are most excited to check out. We'll see you guys in the postgame.